गपशप के साथ तो एक कप चाय बनती है मसाला चाय इलायची लौंग और दालचीनी इसको कूट लें उबलते पानी में डालें इसके अंदर चाय की पत्ती और चीनी डालिए बढ़िया मसाला चाय बनाने का मेरा एक छोटा सा राज है ताजे दूध से बना रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डाल दे ये हुई ना मसालेदार बात रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क चाय का परफेक्ट मैच रेनबो टॉप गन सीजन थ्री हेलो एंड वेलकम टू रेनबो टॉप गन सीजन थ्री विद योर होस्ट Shane Phillips. On this episode, we listen to the story of a maverick, a man who went to business school and felt he already knew most of what they were teaching him. While most people were going to the United States of America or the United Kingdom, he wanted to go to Africa, and he did. Some parts of the story might seem as if they're right out of a Bollywood pot boiler. <laughs> presented by Nokia inspired by Cadillac Anand Narayan Kapoor the co-founder and vice chairman of the Midland group was born in Kanpur UP in a well-to-do family his father was an entrepreneur and wanted Anand to do his masters in business and join him but the challenge loving Anand had other plans Anand Kapoor welcome to Rainbow Top Guns You have to be one of the more exciting top guns we've had. You are the youngest we've ever featured. Thank you for having me in this show. Well, like Steve Jobs, Elon Musk and so many titans, your story actually starts with dropping out of business school. That's exactly not the real truth. I did not drop out of the school, but uh I left the school when I was a rank holder in in my MBA. And you had a vision of other things to come. So tell us a little bit about your early years. I had very bad grades in year 12. I come from a family where my uncle was at a director level in Hewlett Packard and uh, he was visiting uh, India at that point of time from US. And he saw my grades and he says you are going to waste your time. You have been talking so big, but eventually I do not see that hard work behind. He took me from kanpur and i went and stayed in uh, ahmedabad for one one and a half years and he groomed and he coached me to unleash the potential i had never realized i had and that was hard work and then i realized that those grades that i lost in year 12 they were so easy but i had lost the time and uh, then i qualified for that uh, mba institute eventually I had a job opportunity from Africa and uh, I convinced my father that the learnings out of business school I believe is going to be less crucial than my learnings in the real life and the job that I picked in Africa uh, was more exciting Anand used to be my not only the batchmate but also my roommate in the hostel and one fine evening his family his father mother everybody comes to the hostel and I was taken aback why everybody is all here all of a sudden and he says that i have decided to quit i was shocked that this this age when everybody is aspiring to be a a, a management graduate and you decide to leave uh, your your management program in just 30% of the way so i said why and he says this is this is because of i have actually got a job in uganda this was again an example why such a quick decision and, and i was actually not convinced at what of time that i wouldn't have Uh, agreed to him but eventually down the line when you see how everything progress and how everything moved forward then obviously i believe that the decision was right at that point of time so at age 22 you get a job in africa in a bank and a year and a half later you hang up your uh, cleats and walk out uh, interesting one and a half years of my life i got to learn a lot first job of my life first real world so i was trained for 3 months and then uh, i was handling the treasury operations after that and couple of other functions assisting functions at the bank 
but I always uh, was very choked over there because I realized that the, the traditional growth in a bank is very slow. And uh, the, the dreams were a lot bigger than what I could emphasize from the, the growth in the bank. Your ambition did not fit your role. That's right. There was a, there was a nice small episode that happened uh, how I ended up leaving this bank. So there were annual increments happen. And my increment was $315. It was fairly a large increment in terms of, of the, the salary. My salary was $800. So. Mm. And I had an argument with the management that if I have been able to contribute uh, in the bottom line of the bank, the increment should have been a lot better. I wasn't satisfied. I had a very good friend of mine who was also one of the largest depositor of the bank. He comes to my desk and he finds me very stressed. So he asked me the reason why am I so low? And I shared with him exactly the, the same scenario. His name is Bhaskar Kotecha. He proposed me, he said, come, let's start foreign exchange business together. If foreign exchange is your strength, let's do that business together. And that was the, you know, I was 23 years old. So serendipity and ambition mixed together is the recipe. That's right. So he probably gave me the first opportunity outside my job uh, to be an entrepreneur. And I then resigned the job. You just quit your job. You're about to get married. As they say, no finance, no romance. Sounds like you're in some hot water here. And I was. Because when I realized I have left the job, I had quite a few people to, to convince. When I called my mother and I said that I have resigned, so she told me, do you have any idea what kind of commitment you are getting into when you're getting married? So we had a long conversation and I had to convince her a lot that I will be able to secure some kind of stable future. I had no courage to, to tell this to my father. I think my mother managed it for, for me. The second challenge I had to convince my fiance their parents, because they were also not very secure, but at least they knew that I have a job in Uganda. So I requested my wife, please do not tell them that I've lost a job for the time being. So what starts out as a fairy tale opportunity of a lifetime quickly turns into a nightmare. True, but in that journey, one and a half years when we were running for an exchange um, together with Mr. Kotecha, we made a lot of money. And one fine morning, we realized that the bank, which was our main bank, which was also the bank which was holding Mr. Koteja's deposit, fails. Creates a complete challenge in our life, uh, and it's like a skyfall. A challenging times for us. I was very young, and I had no experience in, in dealing these kind of situations. And I meet him, and I see him very subtle and very relaxed, and I would not Imagine a person who has lost all his wealth in one single day, has got so much of strength and subtleness on his face. He gives me a lot of strength. And when I got that strength, I was able to tailor-made a strategy, which is probably one of the most courageous thing I could have ever done. I bid to take over the bank I used to work. I appointed KPMG at the age of 24, and I requested them to come on board because I did not have the technical expertise to take over that bank. Neither I had money to pay KPMG. The partner of KPMG was a good friend of mine. He helped me to bid that bank. Could it get any more exciting than this? Will Anand Kapoor and his partners be able to take over the bank? We'll find out in just a minute, so stay tuned. With the loss of a bank, we also lost all the money we had. So we had to make a plan, where are we gonna generate the capital back? I had a lesson to learn, to earn a lot of money and to lose a lot of money in a very short span of life. Presented by Nokia, inspired by Cadillac. Purane gaane, purane dost, ghar ki yaade, aur ilaichi chai. Ubalte paani mein ilaichi, चाय की पत्ती और चीनी डालें 
कुछ देर गैस पे उबलने दें इलायची चाय तभी अच्छी बनेगी जब आप यूज करेंगे रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क जो बना है ताजे दूध से इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डाल दे इतना सिंपल घर की याद दिला दी रेनबो इवेपोरेटेड मिल्क चाय का परफेक्ट मैच रेनबो टॉप कॉन सीजन थ्री Welcome back. We're in conversations with Anand Kapoor, co-founder of the Midland Group, a young go-getter who is about to take over a bank that employed him just a few years earlier. Anand, were you successful in your bank takeover attempt? She in the takeover bid uh, took an interesting shape. Central bank eventually raised some objections, and we uh, lost it. With the uh, loss of a bank we also lost all the money we had so we had to uh, make a plan where are we going to generate the capital back i ventured into a pharmaceutical business did some tenders with uganda government which helped me to generate the first working capital uh, in 2001 that's that's amazing so you basically made a million and a half dollars lost it then made it back all in the span of 30 months it was it was it was a good learning lesson and uh, that probably became one of my strengths as well because uh, at the very early age of life um, i had a lesson to learn to 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 earn a lot of money and to lose a lot of money in a very short span of life i met alan first in uganda when he was st uh, starting up business there and i joined him uh, at a very young age and he's been my mentor ever since then as a friend is probably the best friend somebody can have cause you can always go to him he's very approachable for any problems you have and he'll always have a solution for you so you go from banking into pharmaceuticals at the same time you also ventured into farming you bought a rose farm how did you know you could make a go of a rose farm shin we got into farming incidentally i read up a auction ad we go and inspect the site and we realize the value of the land was very good it was 50 acres of lake facing land when we acquire that land we realize that we have also acquired rose farming business together with 400 people next thing i do is i set up a very professional team who would know how to grow flowers and eventually it started exporting close to 20 million stems of roses per annum how much revenue is that 20 million stems 20 million stems got me on an average of 30 to 35 euro cents and i ended up making close to 20 25% margin it worked for us to bring the capital back in the business so when your wife first joins you after your wedding as we already discussed you're pretty much broke she has to go and work in a school but later you come back you actually buy that entire school when this school was up for sale it was published by ifc and we had to bid for it together with my team we made a bidding document so comprehensive that in 2003 ifc was amazed to see such a comprehensive uh, bidding document and god was kind enough we won the bid and i took over the school where my wife was working and she became the director and uh, it was one of the most beautiful moments for both of us how did you come to dubai i was coming back from a holiday from london and uh, we were transiting dubai to uganda and we were staying just as a leisure trip and at that point of time i told my partner mr kotecha it looks like there is lots happening in in dubai can i stay back and look into some business opportunities and he said yes we picked up the the phone and we checked the hotel can you extend the the room for next 20 more days i said okay fine and this is how i stayed back in dubai at this point of time i had never thought uh, i will one day settle down here i had no set agenda what will i do in dubai the purpose was to establish myself in dubai look for an industry which is growing 
I moved around in the market and realized the telecommunication industry in 2003N was one of the most buzzing industry. So I, at that point of time, decided, let me focus on telecommunication business and see what opportunities are available. It was difficult, but I established a company through an agent, hired this professional. We were five people in the company. So that is the time Midcom got established in Dubai. Shane, we decided we will trade from handsets. And in 2004, we realized Nokia was one of the market leaders. What and how we would associate ourselves with Nokia and set up the business in trade of handsets. That was the foundation uh, for Midcom in 2004. We started our distribution from a small country called Rwanda. It took me a while before I could convince then the mighty Nokia to take Midcom as a partner. But with a lot of effort, once we were successful, uh, we started expanding into different countries and we were one of the export partners for, for Nokia in, in Dubai and we had 14 countries all across Africa where today we partner with them. And in terms of numbers and value, we became a valuable partner for Nokia globally. There was a day I was sitting with a $5 million check outside one of the Nokia distributors and he refused to meet me in 2004. I told my general manager, he has the strength that he's a partner of Nokia. One day we will be one of the leading partners of Nokia. And uh, today Midcom is, is there. You're in banking, pharmacy, farming. Now I find out you're also in dairy. That's utterly amazing. Tell me, how did you first get into the dairy business? Shane, dairy business started over a drink in India. I was attending a marriage and I had uh, somebody who knew about dairy business. We were discussing about the milk availability in Africa. And he gave me an idea to set up this dairy industry. We set up this plant in one of the remote areas, a mil milk surplus area in Uganda. And we now process half a million liters of milk a day. Is there any other business in Africa that you're in that we haven't discussed yet? Shin, during this course of the time, we have developed some very iconic projects in Uganda, a commercial tower, some residential apartments. Interestingly, in Nigeria, we are now setting up with joint venture with Samsung, the manufacturing plant to assemble all of their white good products. Uh, this will be old TVs, fridges, air conditioning units. Uh, this is one of the latest things that is happening as we are talking. And there is something which we are already in an advanced stage for Dubai, which we will see by early next year, is we are setting up a fashion university. This will be tying up with one of the top five universities in the world and would also bring Dubai to a map of uh, Islamic fashion. So Dubai will play one of the leading roles to innovate Islamic fashion uh, from the university we're gonna have. He makes it look so simple going from taking over a bank, pharmaceuticals, telecommunications, farming, but we all know behind a successful man, there's a very intelligent woman. And after the break, we're gonna talk to Anand's better half. So stay with us. From the day I left MBA, from the ventures I do today, I pursue my dreams fearlessly. If people can believe in themselves, chase their dreams, they'll be good. Presented by Nokia, inspired by Cadillac. This is not a phone to just capture beautiful things. This phone captures feelings. It memorizes dream machines and the goosebumps you got when they screamed. To record a jump into the unknown and relive the madness, the dry mouths, the exploding chests. Introducing the large screen new Nokia Lumia 1520 with a full HD display, full HD video recording and distortion free sound capture. Don't just record, relive. When you shoot for the moon, you build your courage, test your passion, 
and persevere. Still looking very good. The all-new 2014 Cadillac CTS, a bold journey. थकान का एक ही उपाय है, एक कप कड़क चाय. उबलते पानी में थोड़ा सा जिंजर, चाय की पत्ती, चीनी. कड़क चाय के लिए मैं रिकमेंड करता हूँ ताजे दूध से बना रेनबो इवैपोरेटेड मिल्क. इसका रिच और क्रीमी टेस्ट चाय में जान डालता है. जैसे ही बढ़िया रंग आए, गैस बंद कर दीजिए। रेनबो इवैपोरेटेड मिल्क, चाय का परफेक्ट मैच। रेनबो टॉप कॉन सीजन थ्री His home in the Palm Jumeirah is proof that Anand Kapoor and his wife are a couple with good taste. Anand had earlier told us that he waited quite a while to acquire this villa. He wouldn't settle for another one. The same goes for his office. He wanted only the top floor in an elegant Dubai high-rise tower in a posh business locality. Welcome back to Rainbow Top Guns. I'm sitting here with Mrs. Anvita Kapoor, the woman behind the man. Tell me, what part of the business do you take care of? Uh, Mitchcom being a big company, I've been managing the finance for all the 17 countries. So tell me, with both of you working in business, do you have time for a quality family life? I think things have fallen in place for me always. I'm very passionate about what I do, whether it's my kids, work, family, friends, or whatever needs my attention. So uh, looking back, I don't really I think I had a struggle to look for time for my kids. Having said that, I would also say that my weekends are completely reserved for them and that's one time which we spend together. Isn't it a bit too much though? You're in the office together, then you're going home together. Isn't it cause a bit of friction? I guess in 17 years you build that chemistry, you know how to live together. It's not really a big deal. What were the toughest moments that you faced together? Since Mitcom started and since we've been together, the life has been a roller coaster. But if you ask me, I've never found any of the moments tough. I've just taken them as a flow and life has just moved on really. I was always ready for challenges, so none of the moments were tough. They were part of life and I've just moved on with them. Well, you mentioned a roller coaster, so when you go into some of those dips, right. what, how do you pull through some of those moments where you just really wanted to maybe strangle You just wait or, to go up. You yeah. just wait to go up when you're down, so that's how it is. And you enjoy the moments when you're down because you know you'll finally be up, and that's what life has been for me. Tell us about your kids. Oh, I've got two lovely daughters, Mehak, who's 13 years old, and Vanishka, who is eight years old. Um, both of them completely different personalities. One is quiet and disciplined and who would not want to annoy mom and dad. And the younger one who's boisterous, uh, rebel. But I think the value and the cultures for both remain the same. So yes. On Father's Day, I made him a card and I stuck lo lots of pictures of our family and of me and him. And I wrote him something um, little that said that how much he inspires me and the reason I'm a, I'm a good human being is because of him and you know helped me a lot throughout my life and that I love him a lot and thank him for spoiling me. I like shopping with my dad, I like going to the movies with my dad, I like playing games with my dad because he's kind. I love my daddy and he's nice. He's chubby. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I think he is the best father anyone could ever ask for. What other hobbies and interests do you have? Golf is one of my interests. And well, that I, I would say I, would, I had picked it more from Anand as he was a really uh, ardent golf player. And we thought, let's just join in and it's a good way to get old. So golf is one. Then I'm a, I'm a fitness freak. Yoga is my passion again. I love cooking, I love traveling, I love meeting people, so the list is endless. What other CSR activities are you involved in? As a midline group, 
We have set up a Midland Foundation in Africa, which helps the poor and the destitute uh, in African countries, supplying them clean drinking water. We have linked us, ourselves with some orphanage, where we do supply uh, regular uh, food items to them and whatever their requirements are. So that's, that's one way we are trying to give back to the society. But we would definitely want to do it uh, more and more uh, with the passing time. That's amazing. I think you're setting a great example for the rest of us. Anand, do you have any message you'd like to leave our audience with? Shane, I'll share the experience and I will try and summarize in a few words. Uh, what I believe uh, in the given times, the education is going to play a very vital role because the environments are a lot more mature and complicated. What worked for me was my personal belief, the perseverance, and eventually working hard enough to ensure that I live all my dreams. Did I ever have a fear of losing them? I did not. From the day I left MBA, from the ventures I do today, I pursue my dreams fearlessly. If people can believe in themselves, chase their dreams, believe in themselves, they'll be good. As I said at the beginning of the episode, you are the youngest Top Gun we've ever featured on the show. And as your wife said, your career has been a real roller coaster ride. And I want to thank you for really sharing your amazing story with us here on Top Guns. Thank you so much, Anand. Thank you, Shane. Thank you so much thank for you. coming on. Thank you. Fortune favors the bold, could not fit more aptly with any story than it does with Anand Kapoor. Basically, he's taught us that persistence and tenacity is not enough. Your intentions must be good, and good fortunes will follow. This is your host, Shane Phillips, saying Masalama. Both of us being traveling, it's sometimes tough to be together with them, but we do ensure that one of us do give them times. Um, it could be watching movies, swimming, or sometimes we make use of a beach and we pitch from here and practice golf. And that's the time we've always been able to tell them the struggle that we have gone through, how the life is, even a sport, a simple thing as in pitching a golf ball can teach them how much focus is required and what kind of persistence is required to achieve anything in life. And I guess this has been a continuous process and we are trying our best to deal with it.